And here we are. Did we live. make it? Live. On the Medical Group YouTube channel. We're here talking to you. Hope you like it. <laughs> yeah. So who do we have already? Uh, People already commenting. Ma Malai Brown says hi. I think Are we're you having difficulty with pronouncing the names today? No. Okay. <laughs> M A L A I Malai. I okay. think that's Malia. Well, Ma it's not Malia Mal because if it was the I before the A, then it'd be. Okay. Malia. Me. Welcome. We're Malia. glad to have you be a part of the hope, show. Hope that's right. So we are going to be talking about Jurd. Jurd. <laughs> Which happens to me every time I get jury duty. <laughs> Jurd. Gerd. 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 It's not a word. <laughs> It's not a word. But, it's an but acronym. We're going to talk about it. And I'll try to get rid of that that noise. We, we do hear noise, so let me see noise. if I can make it. Hopefully people can hear us this time. Okay. There. Yeah. Well, they can hear us. They just, they hear us plus the noise. So oh. we apologize oh. for yeah. the noise. <laughs> I, they may not even hear. It may just be me hearing things. <laughs> but we do want to be ready and set up for uh, those of you who Skype in. Use Oh, I didn't put it in the description of this video. So they just have to know it from previous you can memorize what, that. what our Skype ID is. And if you do know it, you can actually call in. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So we will be also taking comments on the chat on YouTube. Yeah. So we're, yeah. we're accessible through a number of ways during this show about Jurd. <laughs> Jurd. So should we Jurd. jump into what is Jurd? Gerd? Jurd. Jurd. Um, yeah. This is based on a, um, a post on my blog, drgreennight.com. Oh, Just, what a coincidence. What do you know? It usually <laughs> happens that way. I um, like to put up some informative uh, posts every once in a while about some common diagnoses we see yeah. here in primary care. So, so there's been, a, um, we've done, I've done one on diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, lower back pain, and some other ones. And now it's GERD. GERD. So what does GERD stand for? I guess is the first question. Pick, oh yeah, you, yeah. Ooh, in the ooh. front row. <laughs> You, you with the face. Ga <laughs> Gastroesophageal reflux disease. Yeah. And Terry Humphrey says her husband has GERD. I believe it's it. It's common. Terry, I believe Very that. common. Yep. yep, that's right. Uh, and hello to all the other people out there. Brianna, Terry, oh. uh, D. Elliott, Colleen, Brianna. thank you for uh, tuning in. D. Elliott? So, so uh, your husband has GERD. Um, I'm sure that at least some word. people watching right now probably have yeah. Maybe at this very GERD. moment they're having <laughs> the symptoms of GERD. If yeah. it's later in the evening, all of our uh, East Coast, yeah, and, East and Coast, and European, and yeah, who are going to bed right now the, yeah. as they're laying down, experiencing this. Yeah, I'm eating that Mediterranean reflux. diet with the well, uh, high fat. It should yeah. protect in some sense. Yeah, could go either <clears> way. So, um, what is GERD, and how is it different from just regular heartburn or something yeah. like that? Because I'm sure all of us have experienced at least some heartburn. I mean, I never get stuff, but even I have had heartburn. At, at, like I've only had heartburn times. maybe two times in my life. That's probably about how many I've had it. Like, yeah. like bad heartburn where I actually had to take something. Yeah. And yeah. since we started eating differently, probably not, not at all, huh? No. Yeah. Yeah, because diet is diet. Uh, very important for it any influences heartburn so or many things GERD. that we talk about. Yeah. But GERD being another one, many people would not even have it if they just eat food that's good for them. Simple yep. as that. Yeah. So um, but we like eating food that's not good for fatty us. Fatty foods. We enjoy eating them. And, and actually being good. overweight because you're not eating healthy can increase your incidence of it goes GERD. together, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Spicy foods. Yeah. Acidic foods. Mm -hmm. Things people don't even think are acidic uh, can affect it too, like tomatoes. Yeah. And Who'd have thought? Coffee. Coffee's yeah. a pretty that's acidic right. one. Yeah. yeah that's one. Um, definitely soda. Soda's bad for you. Soda's bad for you in so many different ways. Soda. You should not drink soda. Soda. We're, we're soda haters here. Well, I, <laughs> I will still have a, a root beer. On occasion. Um, yeah. But I, I almost. I, I prefer them not to have phosphoric acid in them and. Yep, yep, not good for you. Not good for the kidneys. Yep. So, um, so back to GERD. So, so heartburn can happen on occasion, but GERD is when you have um, that reflux, that that pain, uh, at least twice a week or once a week, very severe, severe in um, in the level of pain. So, if it's extremely severe once a week, then it is, and, and then that gives you the diagnosis of this gastroesophageal reflux disease. So, okay, that sounds pretty simple. Yeah. So, very straightforward. Um, and most of the time you can it's, it's like, identify it on your own and treat it on your own. It's like just heartburn, but bad. 
Yeah, essentially. Like the next level. Like a migraine is a headache, just bad. Just bad, that's all it is. <laughs> Maybe we should I, correct that. Yeah, that's not true. Sure. <laughs> In this every, case, every it bad headache. Yes, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. I, oh, Brianna says, I have heartburn worse when I'm pregnant. Like, uh, not like any other heartburn. Yeah, that's true. Uh, because when you're pregnant, because um, there's a nice little uterus. Man, not so little. No. Not so little uterus. Not little. <laughs> that's pushing up there on things. There is a uterus. And starting to, um, yeah, push uh, contents of the food and acid and all that back up into yeah, your esophagus. Get, get stuff refluxing. Yeah. yeah. What is reflux? What's that word mean? So reflux. Oh, not well, let's talk about that. Sleep. Reflux. Yeah. So so there is uh, your esophagus. That's the tube that goes from the back of your throat to your stomach to deliver food. That's essentially all it is. Is a delivery pipe that pushes food down there. At the bottom of that, between the esophagus and the the stomach, is this uh, sphincter called the gastro. <laughs> he said I, sphincter. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Come on, Beavis and Bad, help me out. <laughs> the, yeah. Anyways, sphincter. Uh, and a sphincter is just a, a collection of muscle that kind of creates a um, uh, tight... Sphincter says what? I don't know. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, that muscle that oh, just essentially uh, closes tight to keep acid from going the wrong direction. So when food goes down into the stomach, your stomach produces acid to help break down the food. That is a normal process. The stomach has a lining, a mucus barrier between the contents of the stomach, that acid, and um, the cells. So there, there's this um, protection. It's getting gross now. Yeah, it is kind of gross. But this is anatomy. Um, physiology. So, so when um, the esophagus uh, does not have that protection, does not have those that mucus lining, it's got different types of uh, cells. And when that acid starts to get up there, it is not protected by the mucus. So it is essentially like pouring acid on, you know, a well, kind of like the surface of your mouth. Yeah, yeah. If you, yeah, if you ever had a, a mucous membrane. Yeah, a mucous membrane. So that can be painful and is interpreted by the body as pain, usually right in at the base of the chest, um, and and often be felt and described as burning because that is yeah. essentially what is happening, and acid is burning your esophagus. So the, thus the term heartburn area of the heart. It's burning. So, so that is heartburn. And then, like we said, reflux, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease is a severe form of that when that happens. Um, and um, can, yeah. can really, really scary bad things that need to be addressed also feel like a burning in the bosom? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially in women, um, women can heart attacks, um, myocardial infarctions can show themselves as uh, unusual symptoms. Some people can mistake it for heartburn or reflux when it's actually a heart attack. So um, anyone can. So that's yeah. why we don't want people to blow off a pain in the chest lightly without getting a chest, especially if it's something you've never had before. Yep. Let's, let's find out for sure. Let's rule out the bad stuff before just saying, oh, it's just heartburn. Oh, a Martian. Martian mommy says, I think my baby Martian. has GERD. Oh, that's oh, so yeah. sad. Okay, it can yeah, happen the whole thing with babies. That's... So in babies, it's a little different. I didn't address that, but that's that's a yeah. great thing you bring up because, because kids can't tell you. Kids can't tell you, oh, I've got this burning right there. Kids, uh, they manifest it differently. Um, usually it's at night. They can have this arching when they, they cry and um, and it, they can cry after they eat because they're getting this um, uh, and be very fussy. But it's usually when they're laying down, um, gosh, there's a name for it, but, but the, where they kind of arch their back and, and, and show, just wail out in pain um, when they lay down is, is kind of a telltale sign of um, reflux in babies. It's, it's sad, but easily treated. Um, same, similar medications to what we treat um, adults with. So You have to be on it forever? For, uh, no, not treat. usually. No. no well, usually babies will grow out. First of treatment, of course, is lifestyle changes. Lifestyle as changes, always. yes. Stop eating badly. Stop it. Yep. I've told you before. Yeah. But Jenny okay. Bergeson says, I have heartburn every day and sometimes it's so bad. I have pressure over the chest. I have IBS, and the doctor says that it's normal to have bad heartburn with IBS, I guess. Isn't that sad? It is. Uh, every day, That's yeah, that sounds like it should be treated. And if you haven't been evaluated further, you probably should, should see a gastroenterologist. But um, back to treatment. Lifestyle changes. Um, Not only what you eat, but when you eat. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to uh, eat too much. late. 
uh, in the day and you don't want to eat too much at one time because if you expand your stomach too much it's got to go somewhere and not always downwards it will go backwards too yeah so um yeah and then i usually want to eat earlier in the night if you go lay down obviously gravity will allow that acid to flow backwards a little more easily instead of being upright did we go over the comprehensive list of things that people eat do we include? We didn't, but do um, we include spicy. We we went we we said acidic. We said sriracha. Yeah. So it's essentially acidic, spicy, and fatty foods. So those are the, kind of the big three. And drinks. Caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. Think about drinks too. Caffeine. Uh, smoking. Smoking is really bad for that as well. Uh, so so many bad things for smoking. You but got your this is an, orders. Another one to add to that, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Those are the the big things. Did we, yeah. did we miss anything? So what would they do so to treat it just things. symptomatically wait, wait. when it occasionally happens? So yeah, if, it, if this is like heartburn or you've or it's just happening once or twice a week and it's not that bad, um, Tums actually work great. Tums, Mylanta, any of those basic compounds that you just take as needed, which neutralize the acid in the stomach. They work quite well. A um, buffer. Just as needed, you know, if it's not something that is persistent. Weak base. Um, yep, a weak base. And essentially that just goes back to basic chemistry, right? That you're putting, adding a base to an acid to create, to neutralize Basic it. or alkaline chemistry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, <clears throat> and let's see here. Um, uh, what we, oh, and then if it's happening more often than not, you can strep, step up your treatment to a um, H2, H2 blocker. blocker. So, so H in this case stands for histamine. This is a different histamine pathway than um, like Benadryl, like that it kind of antihistamine, the allergic histamine. Uh, but histamine actually acts on the stomach to help you produce acid. So if you can block that histamine, you can reduce acid. It's um, effective so uh, H2 and works are... quickly. So that includes uh, Pepsid, Zantac, um, Tagamet, those are kind of just off the, the big top, ones. off the top of my head. Yeah. Now, and they're effective. They work quickly um, and uh, are safe. You know, really not many downsides. My go-to um, is ranitidine, the generic for Zantac, 150 yeah, that's milligrams what, that's twice what I a go day. Yeah, Which is over the counter. Yep, you can pick that up. You can take it every day. Um, um, fairly it's safe. It's a fairly safe medicine. Uh, yeah, I, I say ranitidine. Uh, not so much the other ones because there's more drug interactions with the other ones. That's, right. that's one of the things that was better about ranitidine than tagamet yeah. or yeah. cimetidine because mm -hmm. it had less drug interactions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, what yeah. I recommend too. Yeah. Zantac or yeah, generic I, Zantac. I, I apologize. I can't think off the top of my head anything bad. About Not really. And then um, there's another use for, for these medicines. Yeah. Yeah, for these ant because anti they are antihistamines. Because they are a type of antihistamine. They're great for bee sting, wasp stings, reactions, uh, yeah. stings from. Uh, yep. Insects and uh, because the, there bodies. are, like I said, those two different histamine pathways. And if you yeah. just take Benadryl, you're actually only hitting one of those pathways. So mm -hmm. adding on some uh, ranitidine can help uh, and itching um, help with the histamine reaction. Yeah, yeah. So so, so that's the so that's part the of antihistamines, the H2 blockers, as they're called. Uh, moving on from there, we we step up treatments to PPIs, which stands for proton pump inhibitors. Um, some basic uh, anatomy in the stomach. Some of the cells in your stomach are um, the acid-producing cells, and they have a proton pump. So um, going out to basic... Proton's kind of our word for acid. Yeah, yeah. A proton is essentially just a positive charge, which is an acid, a positive, negative, acid base. Yeah. Um, so if you uh, are putting more protons in there, that's it creating an acid. Um, yeah. And it is actually hydrochloric acid. That, that you're that's in there. yes that's crazy huh you got hydrochloric acid in your proton stomach. and a chloride yeah and a chloride that's the yeah. the the what's the word i'm looking for the transfer there um so these pro proton pump inhibitors will actually attach to that pump that's putting in the acid and turn it off just turn it off completely they're very there effective um, Shuts down acid production. Yeah, all, completely. Uh, because they do that, you can have some GI side effects from it. You can get diarrhea. You can get some indigestion from it because you're not, not digesting because you don't have the acid in there. Um, and some newer research says that they may affect your kidneys. There may be some other stuff. That research needs to be uh, substantiated. It was done in a... When, when used um, correctly... Uh, yeah, not really. Not so so uh, if you look on the back of the box, it says only take for two weeks at a time. Um, and also yeah. a threat to um, risk for osteoporosis. Again, right. calcium. It's, it's not it's taking somebody with normal bones and turning them osteoporotic by itself. It's right. it's 
Yeah, it seems to be associated with, amongst other things. So, right. Not necessarily a reason not to use it if it's the thing that gets you symptom free. But it is why we say try the Double H2 first. blockers first. Yeah, because they uh, don't have those risks. Let me see if we have any calls. Um, not yet. So, so those are the PPIs. If it is being persistent and the PPIs that proton pumps, oh, I guess we should say what those, that includes. So that's like your name brands would be like Prilosec, Nexium, Prevacid, um, which one, those are the over-the-counter ones. Those or the generic ones. names would be Omeprazole, Isomeprazole, Pantoprazole, anything with yeah. Oprazole. <laughs> there you go. Essentially. Yeah, that covers it. Yep. Um, and that, like I said, very effective. If you're still having symptoms despite those, you should definitely see a doctor and yeah. you probably need to see a gastroenterologist. So those are over the counter now. They are. Yeah. And, and we will use them, you know, over the, it says only use it for two weeks without consulting your physician. When somebody comes in and we've ruled out and we go, yeah, this isn't a heart attack. This is not a thoracic aneurysm dissecting this, you know, all these yep. other things that can be Scary really stuff. bad going on, mm -hmm. uh, pulmonary embolism or whatever. Then we go ahead and start these medicines. We'll do it for four to six weeks, allowing time to, yeah, go ahead. You're going to explain it. Yeah. Um, what, what to it's doing essentially heal forces. up the yeah. stomach. So so part of the reason you can get a gastritis as, as part of this as well, where that mucus barrier breaks down um, and, and you can start to get some like burning pain actually in the stomach. Um, and so shutting off that acid essentially allows that to heal. Uh, same thing with the esophagus. Shutting off that acid allows that area to heal. Um, you know, so it's not constantly being bombarded with the acid. So, so it's not doing the healing. Uh, your body's doing the healing. It's just, it's, it's taking, just away taking away the, the, the insult. <laughs> taking away the insult. Yeah. Or giving you a vacation from acid in exactly. your stomach so that things yep. aren't assaulted by that acid right. burning through them. Yeah. And, and it actually allows repair of that uh, valve-like function yeah. Yeah, between it's, the it's, stomach it's and the esophagus that goes away in many people when the acid has done damage. And it, it takes time for that function to come back. Yeah. yeah. So then what? Um, so how, how do we know it's worked? You feel better. You, you <laughs> take a trial off well, of it. you're taking the medicine. Right. So, so typically I'll do for two months. Uh, eight weeks if, if wow. it's if it's something that really well yeah if it's like a horrible burning or um, yeah that's kind of my max um, usually I'll try shorter than that but that's my max if it's beyond that and you're still having pain then GI but uh, we will I'll stop it and, and you'll know, see how they do off of it um, yeah. give them a trial off or um, step down therapy down to those H2 blockers which we're doing much more often now yeah. that we've seen that eh, there's some concerns with right. PPIs yep. yeah yeah and, and there are still people who end up taking them daily, even right. even after that. And we'll send them to the gastroenterologist, and they'll say, "Hey, this this person has," or or maybe they'll right not even be just minor GERD; it'll be a bleeding ulcer or right. something. Yeah, they need them a little more much more serious persistent. situation and much more complicated than yeah. just GERD that we're talking about here today. So so that can bring us to some of the um, uh, uh, problems that you can have if it goes untreated. So one of those is you can get an ulcer. You can get an ulcer in yeah. your stomach, in your esophagus, if it wears down that barrier um, and goes down to um, a, a vessel, you can actually bleed, you can start to bleed. So the medicine actually, it's it's an incredible medicine yeah. what it does and accomplishes. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that can happen is Barrett's esophagus. Uh, so as that yeah. acid is continuing to spurt up through that sphincter onto the esophagus, the esophagus has different types of cells, as I mentioned earlier. Um, if it has that acid constantly hitting it, it will change the type of cells that it has Two similar cells that are in the stomach, those mucus producing cells. Um, and that change, any, anytime a cell starts to change, it is concerning because it can continue to change. Metaplasia. Yeah, that's the fancy term for it, metaplasia. Um, and if that continues, you, it can actually turn into cancer. Uh, you don't want it, and it can, Yeah, metaplasia. Plasia is a precancerous condition. So Barrett's esophagus is when they actually go down, the gastroenterologist, and they take a biopsy of that bottom part of the esophagus, and it shows that the cells have changed. Um, and they see that under the microscope. Yeah. Um, and because of that, they, 
which seems they like a good them. thing. It's adapting to the acidic environment. Right. So it can protect yeah. better, right? Yeah, but Isn't that good? You would think so, it, but no, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, uh, any change not when a cell much. is changing from what it normally is, is a slippery slope, and it yeah. can continue to change into a cancerous condition, esophageal cancer. So. Strange way that works. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, they'll typically put you on those PPI um, medications long term to prevent that change. Yeah. Yeah, because in that case, uh, the risk of cancer is greater than the risk of those things that we talked about, those side effects from the PPIs. It's appropriate to use it when there's a reason for it. Yep. But it's better not to need it because so many cases are related to what people are doing to themselves. Yeah. Not all. You're but right. So much right. of it, if people would eat in a healthy manner, wouldn't be happening. Right. Um, let's see here. Let's let's see. Yeah, some really can... cool comments there, huh? Uh, looks like it. Let's see. D. Elliot. Um, I get heartburn just thinking about it. Just thinking about it. Makes... Been on omeprazole for years now. So you're oh man. Those, hopefully that's under a doctor's guidance. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Is it bad to be on that med for a long period? Yes. We talked about some of those risks. Um, so definitely talk to your doctor. Most about people, it. it won't be a problem. Yeah. Most of it, you won't have an issue, but, um, yeah, but I... definitely it should be We're monitored just... by a doctor. Being careful. Yeah. Uh, choline E takes gabapentin and it says you can't take antacids with it. Can you take an H2 blocker with gabapentin? Well, it's going to be the same issue if it's because of acid. Or yeah. it might be that there's an issue with uh, using the same system in the liver. I, I don't know. I'm, right. I'd have we to see look that quite up, often that we get that warnings about medicines working together. And it's because they are processed by the same uh, liver enzyme enzymes in the liver. And so... Uh, yeah. you'll, you'll see either either it'll use it, and so the other drug uh, is more potent than it normally would be, or sticks around longer. Or sometimes you'll also see that it ramps up um, the function of those enzymes, and so it, it actually processes yeah. it faster. Yeah, so it's not as effective. So you, you have to look these up when there's... Right. When you get the little notification that's a drug interaction. Yeah. Um, we, we do not know every drug interaction mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, I, there I are so many. I don't know, but, what, but just off the top of my head, I don't know. That is it because but, so we don't know if it's a drug interaction or if it's a matter of you need an acidic environment to. I don't know. Be I effective. don't. I think you need an acidic environment I, for I, a I don't know. A pharmacist would. Yeah, a they know these things too. <laughs> PharmD. That, We'd have to look it up. That'd be really nice right now. If you're a PharmD, right, or even better, call. Of course, they don't have the Skype ID on today's. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put it in the description your... today. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, here's an interesting question. As a patient ages, should they reduce the amount of GERD medication? They have less stomach acid production? Question mark. Um, I have not had that well, in my experience. Um, but the medications are more risky as you get older. Yeah, the problem. And any medication is more risky. As far as that. adjusting the dose on it, I do it according to how effective it is. You start at the lowest effective dose, or the start at the lowest dose, and only go up if you need to to be effective right. to maintain mm -hmm. the patient on the lowest effective dose. Right. That's and often you'll, the magic if somebody's been on something for a while and they're not having these symptoms, like I said, I'll try to titrate them down or, or decrease their medication or switch them over to something that may be a little more safer um, for long-term use. H2 bar. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. We've okay. been doing a lot of that. So this was in uh, the Dr. Green it was blog today. People can actually... Yeah, get subscribe. that in their email inbox somehow. Yeah, every Monday morning, um, you you just get one email. It's it, it goes live at seven o'clock, except this morning, where <laughs> I accidentally put it on the wrong date. But it still it still went live at about eight o'clock. Yeah, uh, it was when just, I realized that. Yeah, it was just a but yeah, uh, once a week, uh, put out a, a blog post, interesting stuff like this, some more um, personal stuff as well, and, and some just uh, fun comments and uh, sometimes patient jokes. It's just uh, fun, yeah. fun. Uh, thing yeah. to do. So, uh, drgreennight.com, D R G R E E N K N I G H D. Is there a link in the description? Did you put one in there? Yes, it's yeah. there already. So, click the link. Uh, there's the a link little place there. to subscribe and just it put is, in your email. It is Check there. it out. Uh, you'll be prepared for these uh, every Monday. And then, also, while you're at yeah. it, make sure you're Study subscribed to uh, the Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel and make sure you hit Which the you bell icon. Which you probably are if you're watching us right now. Yeah, but if, you, if you're watching us later, hit that bell icon, make sure yeah. you get the um, notifications. That yeah, that way you can actually comment in. Yeah, you can be one of our, our lovely commenters, and, which uh, we appreciate. Just uh, talking about stuff going on with the channel, we had fun with a YouTube premiere Yeah. last week. That's, mm -hmm. That was a new thing, Wednesday evening at 4. 
Uh, some of you were there for the premiere of Dr. Gwen giving me the shot in the shoulder. <laughs> It was Which was a continuation of a video that was supposed to include that till the right. phone died. <laughs> that was fun because we were watching it for the first time together. We had a, a live chat like we do here while yeah. we were watching the video the first time it played on YouTube. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's so pretty neat. We may do more of those in the future. That if we, would be fun. If we have uh, pre-recorded more, videos. More pre -recorded. We haven't done one of those for a while. Yeah. And, and I might put something out with the chronic care management stuff. Okay. Uh, just so people can... And there's some doctors out there that may be interested in seeing that. Um, what I'm talking about is ccmpays.com. We'll talk about it more later because I'm still editing those videos together. But it's directed at doctors. So. Yep. Uh, um, somebody interest. says, could you talk about IBS? That's a great idea. We should talk about IBS. We should talk about IBS. Some, we'll do that. At some point in the future. I'll I mean, have yeah, to... We'll talk about IBS. Yeah, we will do that. that. Uh, the other thing we talked about last week was the Camp Fire, the fire in yes. Duke County. And right. We finally got some rain, which was good. And we are... A good thing. We encourage people to go Thrivent because we heard that there was matching yeah. giving there. And mm -hmm. I, I haven't confirmed that myself. I probably should okay. have before we talk about it. Uh, but we're also working on a benefit concert in Roseville, uh, January 12th, I think, at the fairgrounds. Oh, nice. Um, so have some, oh, so I good. think it's mostly Christian musicians that would yeah. show up. Cool. And uh, that's just in the earliest, earliest, earliest planning stages. So I'm not even giving you the web address to that yet. But mm -hmm. that is something that we are working on. Yep. So we're excited about that. Excellent. Okay. So Well, before we go real quick, Boo Boo Kitty, thank you for oh, your yeah. support of, um, of the blog. Appreciate it. And Lindsay Antoine. Yep. yep, we appreciate it. Who, you make this happen. Who does comment on the videos? It's just when she gets home and watches them, oh. she's not able to catch this them happens live. during her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, that's all right. This is a live event, so. <laughs> all right, but, but we thank you anyway. Yeah. So yeah, until next time. Yeah, I'm Dr. Gwen Vaughn. I'm Dr. Mark Vaughn. Thank you so much. Till next time, stay in good health.